wherever I stand. The earth beneath me belongs to the empire of Ursus. These were the words spoken by Pursuer as he confronted Calcet in Victoria, unfazed by the political nightmare he would cause if he had fought on Victorian soil. For by his own words, the land belongs to Ursus, and he can act as he wills. Was this arrogance? Words said by a man with an overinflated ego, with no understanding of how the world actually works. Or was this spoken with nothing but confidence? The confidence to enact the will of Ursus, the will of the Emperor throughout the whole of Terra. Confidence backed by strength. Today we will unveil the mysteries behind the greatest fighting force the Empire of Ursus has to offer. Introducing, the Emperor's Blades. The Emperor's Blades are elites within the Ursus Royal Guard, and as their name suggests, they answer to the Emperor, and the Emperor alone. They are dressed in jet black uniforms adorned with scarlet buckles, not too dissimilar to the uniforms of the common soldier. This uniform also served as their armor to be worn in battle. They carried a red sword by their waist, but their most striking physical characteristic, however, was the helmet they wore over their heads. It fully covered their faces and tubes connected it to a machine on their backs. The helmets had multiple red vertical slits on them, presumably to allow the Emperor's blade to see. All in all, they look almost inhuman. In fact, that was not far from the truth. Their armor served two purposes. The first and more obvious one is to provide protection in battle. And it did so more than adequately as it was strong enough to withstand multiple hits from Kaltzit's monster. The second and more important function was to seal and control the powers of the demons contained within them. To the north and south of Terra, in unexplored regions of the world, existed the Eldritch Demons, grotesque monsters that resemble nothing like the ordinary creatures of the world. They are said to possess many eyes and many limbs, making them look nothing like the humans or animals of Terra. The inhabitants of Terra are at constant war with them. The soldiers of Sargon kept the demons from entering Terra from the south, not allowing them to pass the Fern Hotlands. In the north, the Sami snow priests used their sacrificial rituals to fend off the demons in the Northland. The elite Tianchi soldiers stationed in the garrison city of Yuman defended Yan while Ursus deployed their armored Wendigo armies to protect their territory. The feared Emperor's blades were also sent out to defend their homeland and the rest of Terra. While most nations and armies simply killed the demons to protect Terra, the Emperor's blades had another idea. The demons were biologically powerful, and they wanted to harness that power for themselves. To fight fire with fire. And so, through the use of demonic rituals, they sealed fragments of the demons within their armor turning their own bodies into half-demon hybrids. Their armor acted as the lock and the key, keeping their demonic powers at bay. Through this, they gained strength beyond those of ordinary men. But should the armor be damaged, should it break in battle, then the demon's power would be let loose. Like a bomb, it would contaminate the surroundings, turning it into a land of death where no plants can grow and no man dare tread. Once upon a time, in the valley of the setting sun, as many as 20 Emperor's Blades fell in battle at the hands of the demons. Their armors were shattered, releasing the demonic energy within them, resulting in the entire area becoming uninhabitable. The Valley of the Setting Sun has turned into a land of fear. Using the demon's powers was risky. But to the Emperor's Blades, and to Ursus, these risks were well worth it. The power it gave them more than made up for whatever danger they might pose. And what were these powers? The Emperor's Blades could conjure swords made of shadows from thin air, and summon a black smog to disorientate their enemies. Not to mention their sheer physical strength and speed. All these allowed a single Emperor's Blade to fight multiple enemy squads at once, and emerge victorious. Their strength was shown in two instances. In Chapter 8, a mere two of their number utterly defeated Tallulah and her pre-reunion members, which counted multiple shield guards amongst their ranks. At first, only one Emperor's Blade showed himself to Tallulah. But once negotiations broke down and pre-reunion prepared for battle, another Emperor's Blade emerged from the blizzard behind them. Tallulah had no hope of victory. Only when Patriot came to their rescue did the two Emperor's Blades withdraw, out of fear and reverence for the old war hero. Even they did not dare contend with the mighty Buldracasti. When that was happening, a young Frost Nova and her Yeti squad was holding off another Emperor's Blade. Just barely for that matter. 
Unbeknownst to them, two more were hidden in the shadows, observing from afar. Had they intervened as well, then Reunion would not have survived to the time of the main story. The next instance we saw the Emperor's Blades in action was during the Walk in the Dust event. An Emperor's Blade known as Pursuer had tracked Calstit all the way to the nation of Victoria. She had assassinated the Grand Duke Vanya of Ursus, drawing the ire of Pursuer. When Calstit was outside the manor of a Victorian Count, talking to a young Heidi, black snow started falling from the night skies. Calstit immediately took notice, telling Heidi to hide in the manor, and not to come out under any circumstance. Pursuer appeared, heralded by the snow corrupted by his demonic powers, and started conversing with Calstit. Calstit revealed her deep knowledge about Ursus and about the Emperor's blades themselves, much to Pursuer's shock. When Calstit refused to tell him how she got a hold of such confidential information, he attacked. Calstit was immediately forced to deploy Monster, a biomechanical creature of unknown origin, to defend herself. Pursuer engaged with Calstit and Monster in a bitter battle, both sides sustaining injuries. Pursuer's armor was damaged, and his mask was cracking. Thus Calstit reminded him about the tragedy that occurred in the Valley of the Setting Sun, whom he was a survivor of, and urged him to end the fight, lest his armor degrades even more. Victoria would not sit idly by as an Emperor's Blade of Ursus utterly annihilates their countryside with his demonic corruption. To continue the battle is to risk war between the two superpowers. Only then did Pursuer take his leave. The Emperor's Blades enact the will of Ursus with extreme prejudice. They care not for morality and would slaughter any and all whom they deem to be opposing Ursus. Mercy was not something associated with them. They were not above threatening to torture the pre-reunion members since Tallulah refused to cooperate. And they utterly destroyed an Alafian village at one point, leaving none alive. Their combat strength and their brutal ways have spread their names far and wide. All who stand in their way shall fall. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please consider subscribing and hitting that like button. See y'all in the next video.